Hi, very good afternoon to you. Uh, it's Gene from Avstar Observatory. As always, guys, you are more than welcome to join us um, as we are rapidly now approaching uh, 10 months towards that 40 degree mark. Let's see what happens uh, when we arrive there. Will we see the strong field lines leave um, and move into the weak field lines? We're just gonna have to wait and see. I thought I'd start today with taking a look at the jet streams. Uh, but before we do go into it, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to those very few people, as I always put in the uh, description down below, you know, it's always a few people that chip in towards, you know, uh, the running and, you know, uh, the service that we provide here at the observatory for you guys. It's only always a few people. But, you know, we do hope that others may seem some value out of this and you know they might take heed of what we're showing them because for this at the observatory uh, it started 10 years ago for me I started um, going onto YouTube just like you guys did you know listening to what was being said and there was talk about uh, and, and there is still to this very moment today talk about Blue Star Katrina Nibriu, the return of the Ammonarchy, you know, there's still people out there, believe it or not, that believe our Earth is flat. You know, I thought Christopher Columbus had nailed that one, you know, a few hundred years ago, but, you know, we still have people that are not satisfied uh, with, you know, all the explanations that me and other people on YouTube have given to prove that this Earth is a sphere. It just simply is that. Uh, because you know when things are forming out of interstellar gas the most natural form um, you know when gravity gets involved is a sphere um, we can do this experiment just quickly uh, if we just get some food dye you know mix it in with a bit of oil and then fill up an ordinary plate and then of water and just drop a couple of droplets on there because we're under a gravitational force it will form a, a, a 2d two-dimensional uh, sphere um, there's, a, there's a little bit more going on as well with oil and water uh, oil being a hydrophobic um, solution or liquid and um, but you know it does give you a good demonstration of what is going on when uh, you know we look at interstellar glass uh, collapsing in on itself the only natural form to create is a sphere and that's why we have planets uh, it does but it does make me wonder when they look up at the moon and they see what shape that is and then they look at the sun and they see what that shape is and then if they go a little bit further and they get themselves a telescope they're going to look at all these other planets within our solar system and you know you would think that that would satisfy them that this planet that we're on is no different to all the others in you know the shape but there you go um, but we're looking at the jet streams you can see um, a lot of fragmentation uh, between the polar and subtropical both over the northern hemispheres and the southern hemispheres uh, you know the southern hemisphere is slowly going now into its winter it's about a month uh, from its epicenter where it will be in its full winter but the other day I did take a look at the temperatures over Antarctica shockingly they was at 68 minus degrees Celsius 68 you know on average you know they're 20 degrees less than that and that brings us to the next thing we'll just continue with just having a quick peek of what's going on around the equatorial region to see if there's any uh, subtropical subtropical exchange and there it is I said this would become a more frequent anomaly that we're going to see a lot more of and we certainly are just like i called it with the polar jet streams you know fragmenting and going into those subtropical if you look at the southern um super jet stream there look at that big um horseshoe shaped jet stream that is blasting arctic air straight into the subtropical region it's warming it up and then it's sending it straight back down into the polar jet stream. Incredible. And just coming back over South America, UK there over the top and towards the west, sorry, the east, we're going into Europe region and we can see the same sort of thing 
taking place over there. You know, the Northern Hemisphere now being tilted towards closer to the sun at this point, putting us in the summer over the Northern Hemisphere. You know, you'd expect, you know, what we are seeing right now, but still there is a clear demonstration between those two jet streams which should be separated and clearly they're not and that is what is delivering you know those uh, weather anomalies that we're seeing now uh, all almost um, you know every week there is a record breaking event somewhere on our planet can you believe that well we know what the cause of that is when you have a weakened magnetosphere and you have a grand solar minimum taking place which weakens the heliosphere it allows more radiation straight away to come pouring in to our solar system and then pouring in through our primary defensive shield our magnetosphere and of course these cosmic rays collide with upper atmospheric particles creating seed platforms you get more water vapor condensing in these jet streams and of course that's why they fragment uh, from the polar jet stream to the subtropical and vice versa over northern and southern hemispheres I wanted to show you this guys because I think you know it really does set us on the path of direction of where we're heading so let's go and take a look at the um, arctic ice uh, content over the northern hemisphere Here we are taking a look at the Arctic sea ice extent. Now, as you can see, that red line is above most of all the other lines, which means we're breaking records going back to 2012. And this is the second year in concession with that trend. It's a short term trend now. Will it turn out to be a long term trend? We've just got to wait and see. But why would things start to be getting cooler when people like Al Gore? tell us that we should have lost ice over the northern hemisphere already by 2014 through global warming caused by mankind why are we seeing this trend maybe the next slide might give us an indication surely you remember this chart it's the interglacial and glacial uh, chart that spans back 450,000 years we can see there has been four previous interglacial periods and we're in the one right at the right hand side of the chart and guess where we're going next back into a glacial period and for those that have been watching the recent videos we're already 6,000 years into that that could be why the glacial are rebounding over the northern and southern hemispheres and I, I can understand right now why you know, if you're in the Himalayas and you're seeing your ice melt that's been stored in the mountains for a long period of time, we'll just bear this in mind. You know, we've been in an interglacial period, a warmer period, for the last 12,000 years, or for at least 6,000 years. That's why mankind has thrived on this planet, because there has been more fertile land which has been uncovered by the glacials that sat on that land for a long period of time. When we go back into a glacial period, most of the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere doesn't escape it ends up being ice bound and those himalayan ice um, glacials will rebound and replenish it's just a matter of time be patient it will happen and guys trust me when you're this close to an anomaly taking place on our earth you don't need to worry about blue star katrina or whether the Amanarchy are going to return, or whether this earth is round or flat. You know, when we're this close, 10 months away from that 40 degree mark, that mark separates those strong field lines where the pole migrates slowly, and when that boundary is crossed, we go into those weak field lines, as the experiment shows, and when that happens, things get a lot quicker. I think this image puts it all into perspective. You can see what happens when we get to 40 degrees, how the weak field line boundary comes up on the dipole and causes that acceleration. There's a lot of people out there 
and you probably subscribe to the same people that I do are talking about you know not just you know a lot of food production collapsing uh, land going offline shipping you know uh, in massive traffic jams in China um, you know and the war in Ukraine going nuclear I tell you now if we was there already with the war going nuclear it would have already happened you don't wait till you lose all your uh, armour you know your tanks your uh, troop personnel carriers and things like that before you launch a nuclear missile because you'll need all those things afterwards and to my surprise to my very surprise people describing 100 megaton nuclear missiles as firecrackers is pretty um, extraordinary description of such a thing these are the worst weapons mankind has ever ever invented on this planet and you don't want to be in anywhere near the close proximity of such a firecracker as it was demonstrated you know or described you know these aren't firecrackers these things kill millions of people in one go and I'm not personally worried about that you know I think there's more than enough on our plate with the grand solar minimum with the coming migrating poles that we're going to be seeing soon you know we're only 10 months away 10 months and then you know we've got the return of the glacial period yeah you can check all these things out for yourselves you know we're not making nothing up here you know we're trying to cover these anomalies and in some cases you know extremely rare anomalies like the magnetic pole reversal the last time it went through an excursion 12,000 years ago just before we came out the last glacial period before that there has been a few other um, uh, you know excursions but not completed reversals completed reversals the last time that happened was 750,000 780,000 years ago we're over half a million years overdue a completed reversal you know it, it makes uh, questions arise why you know there's a lot of questions you know that I find more interesting and I want to know the answers to whether you know we're going to go into another nuclear war I'm not bothered about that you know I think if you've prepared for these events then you're probably already covered for other events even though they're rare and they're not likely to happen but I think you'll still do well um, if you've been preparing for you know the magnetic reversal the returning of the glacial period and you know this period uh, that we're also in with regards to the low solar output the grand solar minimum if you've put some things away then you're probably already on your way to being squared away for those events and they can lend themselves to another you know if you've got a bug out bag you hopefully you'll have a wet tree saw in there you'll have a fire striker um, you'll have an emergency shelter you'll have some paracord you'll have perhaps uh, a first aid kit you know these things can give you the best acceleration and acceler and and um, you know um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's 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 lost me the word I was going to use then. Um, but yeah, you'll be in a much better opportunity than a lot of others yeah, that haven't got those things. You know, we've seen. You know, uh, catastrophes happen already. Um, when Katrina flooded and the government never came to their uh, rescue, we saw what happened. Now, people uh, would have seen their houses underwater for many, many weeks. And if you just had your bug out bag, a little food storage, you know, you'd have been able to. Uh, drink clean water because you'd have had a little purification system in that bug out bag. You know, these things don't cost a lot of money. And yet, you know, 99% of the population on this planet do not have that insurance policy for themselves or even the loved ones. It's, it's bizarre. You know, 
You're already ahead of the game if you've got it. And if you don't experience a catastrophe at your own front door, then you've still got it. You know, I said to people it was just a matter of luck that, you know, more people haven't been caught up in all these events. But we could see an acceleration to all this because over the last 30 years when we saw the last um, acceleration of the magnetic pole increase covering more distance over a short space of time uh, since the 90s to the present day I believe we've witnessed a small uh, acceleration uh, in the poles as we've been monitoring them this year you know we've seen it went from 4.2 to 5.1 miles 5.2 miles every month you know that's a 20% increase in speed is that because we're getting closer now to that 40 degree mark well just look at that needle before it gets the 40 degree mark watch what happens it gets quicker and quicker doesn't it so you know 1990s we're now in 2022 in 2022 alone this year we've seen a 20% increase you know we are getting close to that 40 degree mark and we could be about to cross that boundary in just 10 months time that's when we enter those weak field lines that's where we see that magnetic uh, compass do a flip now I know some people are finding it hard to get their head around this experiment and what it shows they're saying no you've got an outside source affecting the compass the compass is one magnet that's let's just clear that up and then the medium magnet which is rotating on the gearbox motor is another magnet so if I took away the gearbox rotating the medium magnet what other magnetic source would be affecting that compass at that time of course it would be whatever generates our magnetic field and generates our dipoles and all this that compass does is point the direction of the polarity of the poles it is already when I even I'm not showing that magnet close to that compass it is already under the influence of another magnet it is the earth's magnet so there is no difference between my magnet or the earth's magnet or the compass you know the earth will affect the compass so will the nubidium magnet so I hope we've cleared up this um, there is nothing new here the reason why I use a nubidium magnet is because I need to be able to show you what happens when something rotates and it gets into those equatorial regions between the North and South Pole on a magnet and I need to show you how it affects the compass. Now, I've been saying since the 1900s, since the poles started to migrate, that the reason your compass is always pointed to North and not like we see on this, pointed to 40 degrees, is because whatever is in the core of our Earth if it's generated there, the dynamo that creates the magnetosphere and the dipoles of our Earth, or if it's on the surface, whatever, whatever, whatever the case may be, what is being demonstrated in this experiment is what is beneath our feet right now has already turned enough to make the poles migrate 40 degrees, albeit 10 months out. That's what that experiment shows. There's no tricks going on here. It's just a slow rotating nubidium magnet in the vicinity of a compass, which is just simply another magnet. But it gives us the opportunity to see what happens when a rotating magnetic source, as we believe is in the interior of our Earth, that's supposed to be the standard model, rotates and gets close to those strong and weak field lines or that boundary. That's what this shows. And obviously, all these pins that we've been putting in Google under the video that you're looking at now are just the pins on how it's been migrating and what we've recorded over the last four years here at, at the observatory for you guys. You know, more people, a lot more people than 98% of the ones that are unaware of this event taking place should be aware of it because there is going to be and I hope it isn't the case, but I believe it might be. There's going to be a lot of tears in people's eyes when this goes full swing, because over the last 
40 odd years or since the 1990s. We've seen these weather extremes become more frequent, more violent in their nature. The magnitude has increased and the um, we see them more often. You know, like I say, I could show you every day of the week a new flood somewhere in this world. You know, I've showed you people's houses underwater. I've showed you people's houses washed away. I've showed you forest fires that have started well before forest fire season starts. You know, the climate has gone to pot. It's no longer predictable. The seasons are no longer predictable. You know, we are seeing record-breaking anomalies across the whole range. And that was um, started around the 1990s. You know, it really became noticeable then. What are we going to see when it surpasses the 40 degree mark? If, you know, a slight acceleration starts all these anomalies off, record breaking events, what will happen when we go past that 40 degree mark? Will we see an exponential increase in all these weather anomalies? Will they not be happening once a week? Will they be happening every day? Will we have, you know, 22 degrees or 27 degrees sunshine one day and sub-zero temperatures the next? Because I will say this, it doesn't matter how many years you've been a farmer or, you know, a mass producer, producer of crops. It doesn't matter how skilled you are as a farmer. At that point, whatever you're trying to grow is not able to adapt to such fluctuations in temperature simple as that and what we're seeing right now is a struggle with um, you know major fruit growers in Europe trying to keep the cold off the plants at this time of the year and as a result they're having to light little paint tins full of diesel uh, to keep the plants warm during those cold and frosty evenings well, well into the next day you know we have seen and I've showed you the pictures of it farmers in China lose thousands of heads of cattle and got to the desperation of lighting small fires under the cow to keep it warm we are for sure going to see more of this guys if you've got something out of this you know, there, and you'd like to help support us here at the observatory, there's a link down there in the description. You know, we certainly hope that you do get something out of it. And, you know, spread the word as well. Because we are 10 months away. Guys, take care of your loved ones. I'll say what I usually do. As always, bye for now.